So if you want to claim that a certain says, human being says, is God in physical says, form, then anyone who looks Moses, at him will be dead. It says Moses saw God's form. Yes. Shall we go to the verse? Shall we go to the verse? You are claiming. Okay. You are where does it? Where does it? Right? Okay. So where does it say? Wait, 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 wait. Where does it say it wasn't literal? So you're assuming as well. You are Hashem. You didn't read it out the first time. You skipped and went to verse 14. And the an angel be called Lord. An angel is a messenger of God. Can you call an angel Lord? So Josh, are we going to have um, part three today? <laughs> well, that's because you keep like, you know, yeah, exactly. So, you know, people like seeing you uh, contemplate. So obviously you've had the chance to read through the references and I've got the reference on me as well so I, if you looked at different reference I can actually show you the reference that I was referring to. It could be both of you, you know. Two stone two birds and one stone. After your Bob shenanigans. Two stones with one bird. Well I don't know if you're a stone but um, yeah, you sound like you because we're we're going to discuss the the plurality this time, isn't it? Oh my gosh, not this again! So you know, I'll talk, but not too long. Right. Okay, that's fine. We're not oh, we can get do it. We can far away from the point. Oh, we can do next week, or how long are you got? Like, I'm here. You... I'm here next week, and then I'm off. Okay, because we haven't seen you for for uh, a few months. Yeah, because I've been in Israel. When did you get back? Uh, on Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, just no oh, okay. So just a short. Yeah, it's a okay. short one. Okay. So let me just see if I can find you that reference, just to see if it's the same one you looked at. Okay. Um, Some hedge on thirty-four. Uh, I've got my head. I can't remember. Let me just have a check. By the way. Huh? I don't mind. Oh, it's your friend again. The cameraman. It's you, always around. I'll tell you, uh, my grandfather had a had a camera inserted. It was annoying the photographer. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, good old Josh's humour. Uh, let me see if I have a reference for you. Do you want to argue about something that matters? Such as? Our law of the New Testament is true. Well, those are the big the, matters. Well, the plurality, what does, um, well, Deuteronomy 6 4, that's like the biggest matter. No, it's not. Yes, it is. If God's not one, then that's your whole creed. Here at Israel, your Lord God is one. As soon as it says that he's one, he's one. That's the end of the argument. Yeah, but what does that mean? One. Well, that's the that's what I'm saying. That's, that's the biggest part of your your creed because I had. I'm not sorry to be just because I mean I hate that we're cheated. I'm gonna have to go two years of on you. One means one. <laughs> well, we will have to see about that. Let me find this reference first because, you're, as you know, you're going to do the one in Genesis, aren't you? With the man and the woman. Well, obviously, of course you are. No, I've, there's other verses, but oh, of but clearly we can see with that reference we see that one does not mean a definite it can be a compound no it one. really was one no because then That's it wouldn't have been used in deuteronomy because it says a man and a woman shall become one so that means it's a compound one. no i think they literally do become one yeah it's but it's, yes because two become one so it means the one you know literally it doesn't two it, becoming one so, does not mean that one does not mean one usually. so so when you when you become a wife you merge into your wife First of all, I don't become a wife. <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, it's 2019. Well, exactly, because it's not literally. <laughs> so, therefore, we um, have to look at the, what the Bible is talking about, because we know it literally doesn't happen. No, it's spiritual. It's not physical. Okay. So, two combined to be one. So, if we're saying two combined to be one, and we have a Godhead that is three, that is, in a sense, one, there's no difference. There is a difference. Why? 
Because over there, because you have look, in Genesis. Yes. If you want, it, okay, if you want to say the one there means a compound one, yes. then fine. Okay. I mean, I don't think it's true. Well, but I don't. I don't think it's true. I think it means literally they spiritually become one. But then, even if you say that, yeah. that goes with the Christian belief. Hold on. Yeah. Because I, we say I, God I, is one. Don't yes, say we God do. Is, say God is three but you've one. just said the two become. It's not two and one. It's two that become a one. How? How? Because their souls become literally one soul. Okay, so we're saying we have three hypers, that's three persons, and they are literally one God. So why is that different then? Why is that different? Yeah. Because you said you've got two because, two souls uh, that become one. Because because God did not say yeah. that three become one. He never said that. God instead said that he is one. But we're talking about at the word ahad, so you're now changing it. I'm not changing anything. Yeah, because... The verse specifically says that God is one. So yes. if you want to take me another ahad. place... I know what it says. Yes. So therefore, we. That's you've the word for one. Yes. Yeah, you the word for one. Yeah, always but has been, always will be. No, because you've got wahid as well. Wahid is not a Hebrew word. Um, what's the Hebrew? So I've got. There is a Hebrew equivalent. Yahid. Sorry. Yahid means. Exactly. No, Yahid wow. means together. Yahid. So you have a definite one, rather than ahad. Because ahad yahid is means more... together. Yes. Ahad means one. And how does the definite one? No, because yes. then you couldn't say two souls become one. Yes, you can. It really isn't difficult. Where in two souls become one and okay. God is one, do you have to okay. say that, 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 that because there is a compound and this therefore also has to be a compound? Well, we take. So, where do you, where, but this is the difference. The you, Christian. You would have, you would the need Christian. A source for such a the, big, because the difference is the claim. Christian mythology is consistent. So if you have two in verses. Case, in case you agree, it's a mythology. No, method, <laughs> mythology. Method, method, I'm not mythology. Help you. <laughs> because basically. What you're saying in one verse, it means one thing, and another verse, it means another thing. No, We're saying exactly in both verses. They both mean one. All right, but then therefore, if you agree it means one, then you cannot then def go against the Christian definition because we're saying three persons are one, and you're saying two persons become one. But how would that be possible then? If the verse wants to, okay, let, let me take your premise that, it, that in Genesis it means a compound one. Let's stick with that. Okay, your premise. Yes. Okay, because I can't bother to fight in that premise. Um, let's say with it does mean a compound one. Okay. How do you know it's a compound one? Because it said two becomes one. Yes. Otherwise, would you have thought it's a compound? If it had not said they become one, would you have thought it's a compound? Well, the Bible, you use the Bible, as you know... Yes. In, if wait, the Bible wait. had not said that, would you still have thought Well, that? according to Isaiah 28.10, it says precept upon precept, line upon line. So therefore, you you're use jumping, the Bible... You're jumping no, because the you're saying, if I didn't read that in the Bible, but the Bible gives you a criteria to use the Bible to interpret itself. And that's based on Isaiah 28.10. Isaiah 2810, if you wanted to read it. Oh, you're jumping again. No, you because like you're, jumping. you're saying, if the line wasn't in the Bible, would I have come to that conclusion? Yeah. And if I say no, it doesn't help you because the Bible gives its own criteria to interpret itself. And that's Isaiah 2810, if you read it. Isaiah 2810, let's yeah. have a look, shall we? Yeah. Okay, I'll start from verse 9, shall I? To whom would he give instruction and a message to those newly weaned from milk, just taken away from the breast, some mutter upon mutter, murmur upon murmur, now here, now there. What's your point? So what 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 is you so this passage where people were complaining about the revelation? And Isaiah is saying about a revelation where they can because they're saying oh, over what, there the yeah. proud crowds of the drunkards that are flying, right? So Isaiah is saying it's precept upon precept, line upon line. So no, it doesn't. Read the read. mutter upon mutter, murmur upon murmur. Well, that's now just, here, now there. Well, okay, explain what that's saying. Because it, even if it's know, mutter I'd upon I'd mutter, I'd have to look in the commentaries to see what it means. Okay, shall I get the commentary? Sure. All right, let's go to the commentary. Which commentary are you getting up? Go to any of your choice. 
Well, we were going to quickly now, discla really violent, discuss the, pl the plurality, the nature of the plurality, because Josh here wanted to discuss a key concept, for example, the oral law or the validity of the New Testament. And I said Deuteronomy 6 4, here the Shema is a core part of their faith, the Shema. So that's why we started with the word Ahad, whether it is a definitive one or a compound one. And then we looked at the, in um, the book of Genesis where it talks about a man and wife shall become one flesh. So my argument was that the Christian interpretation of that word is consistent because in both verses, we take it as a, a plurality becoming one. Now his interpretation is different for both verses because he's saying yes, in uh, Genesis, two can become one, but then in uh, Exodus, or sorry, Deuteronomy, one is one. So he's got two different interpretations for the same word. Nope, none at all. Yes, because we're saying, as Instead I of, said before. So we'll, I'm just going to go now to as I said before. the interpretation of you, Isaiah oh, 28. Okay. Uh, well, you're Hebrew, isn't it? No. Oh. He's a normal Christian. Oh, you're just Christian, yeah? And you're obviously Jewish, yeah? Yep. Okay. Obviously. So, <laughs> so what's your argument? Uh, my argument is one means one. He holds that one does not mean one. So it's you might need to go for further down because obviously it's a few verses that's so that's so 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 believe this was um the sabbath of him the ethic of 12 of him yeshua himself shall i come to the sabbath because i love you from him tell me only him yeshua himself the sabbath shall i know how should we should talk about how is him talk well, it's, this one's in Hebrew, so he's just reading. Well, it's, this one's not in English. Yeah, it's only in Hebrew. Okay. So, Ibn Ezra says, For precept must be upon precept, which is what I said, one must speak to them in the same way as the father speaks to his little child that does not yet know much. So therefore we see, especially Revelation, is kind of broken down. So that's why I'm saying precept upon precept. So that's what you're saying. I was jumping. I was saying precept upon precept. This is biblical. It doesn't know. What what did um, Rashi say about it? What you just read? Let's try and understand what he's saying. Okay, let's see the first bit. He's saying uh, the prophet is commanding them from God. From God, um, revelation. And they have a uh, they have for them a command of the the idol worshippers against the uh, the commandment of this I, I guess the commandment of God I suppose um, and maybe the commandment of the Jews I'm not sure and the prophet goes back and rebukes them um, so I mean we I think rebukes them okay um, if you we can go to other interpretations that one's not clear so we go to Ibn Ezra he says for precept must be upon precept which is the word I use and you said mutter and but this is your own Jewish interpretation sure. so it says for precept must be upon precept one must speak to them in the same way as a father speaks to his little child that does not yet know much okay. some editions have I'm not sure what that says he should not continue to do evil that he should not continue to do evil but according to I the prophets describes here the mode of imparting knowledge to infants all right and your point is what exactly so I'm saying Let's just see. Because that's how you so wait, 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 wait. Yeah, Ibn Ezra, precept after precept, a precept joined to precept. Okay. So this is what I was saying. So when you go through the Bible, you can join precept upon precept, which is a line upon line. Do you know what a precept is? Tell us. A precept according to is you. a commandment. That's why it says mitzvah. Mitzvah means command. Okay. Another word for command is precept. That's and, what it is. And Deuteronomy 6:4 is, is a commandment. Here, Israel, your Lord God's one. It's actually not a commandment. No. Uh, where, where do you see a command there? So, okay, let's go to Deuteronomy. So, what I'm trying to say before we go into that is basically we see from Isaiah where revelation can be given, but it's built upon line upon line. A precept is built up upon, upon well, precept. Revelation is given, but is okay. built what, upon line what, upon line. Yes, what is a precept? Precept is a commandment. Okay. That's what a precept is. Because that precept is just a translation of the word mitzvah. And mitzvah means commandment. 
from the root of Tzadi Vav Hey, which means to command. That's what it means. Okay. Okay. Trying to find other commentaries. Okay, none in English. So, well, let's go to Deuteronomy again. Irrelevant to the point you're trying to make. No, it even because talk about so the, word the point I'm trying to make is yeah. that when things are given by God, yeah. and you look in the Bible, so basically what I'm saying is when we compare um, the word I had. That we're using the knowledge that we've gained from one verse, it also use it in context with another verse. Why are you doing it that way and not the other way? What way? Why do you do it from Genesis to Deuteronomy and not from Deuteronomy to Genesis? Because we read Genesis first. However, we have a concept. Oh, you don't know this concept because you don't believe in the old law. Okay. But because you're, you seem to be going into the old law. Because oh yeah, I'm, I'm but going to. Uh, I'm going to bring it in anyway. In our last then, discussion. When you said the law about the oral law, you said the oral law is very confusing because it can be contradictory. No, it seems to be contradictory, and you have to you have to study it in depth to realise why it's not. But then, if you have rabbis that com have opposing um, Views, opinions, then yes. how can you say the oral law is consistent? Consistent because that because we say there are seventy faces to the Torah. So even though in the physical realm. We need. We can only have one thing to be the truth, and we can only be doing one thing. Okay. However, in the spiritual realms, they're all in fact correct. But you can't we have can't two opposing truths that are correct. In the physical realm, you can't. In the spiritual realm, you can. So you're saying in the spiritual realm, you can have contradictions that are both correct. Yes. Okay. What more can I add to that? Because if you have an answer that's yes and one that's no, they can't logically both be correct. In physical logic, correct. In, sp in the spiritual realms, our logic doesn't apply. Yeah, but God was the one who created. It yes. is the one who created but, logic. But what I'm saying to you, you cannot have two opposing truths. One has to be right, one has to be incorrect. I'm telling you, and that's how we have it in the human realm. In the mortal realm, we can only have one thing to be the truth. But in the spiritual realm, it doesn't work like that. Okay. You can't get your head around that and... Uh, well, okay. I mean, I'll let people decide for themselves. I think any any kind of logical. That's the only um, answer you'll get out of me because that is the but, Jewish position. But even that with is that, the true position. but then even with that, that would help me because you, no, according to your logic, God is one. In the spiritual realm, God is a plurality. So that actually helps the Christian uh, perspective. How would it help? Because you're saying the spiritual logic does not go with the earthly logic. So, according to your earthly logic, you're arguing that God is one. And that's what we know logically from this world. So therefore, the Christian logic is that Ahad is there's a plurality in God, which goes against what we know in the physical realm, but it's a spiritual truth. However, however, whilst you would be right, if that's all there was to it, you're not, because there is more to it. Okay. What is there more to it? The fact is that it's only a truth in the spiritual realms, if it doesn't, if, if, if it doesn't go against what God said to us at Sinai, what did God said, say to us at Sinai? He gave us the written law and he gave us the oral law to explain the written law. Okay. Now, if what you are saying is not to be found anywhere in the written law or, or oral law, it's not even it's not even an opinion. Law. It's, it's not it's not there at is all. Is there references to oral law in the Torah? Of course there are. There are references. Um, that way it's explicitly stated. The most concrete reference is in Deuteronomy. I can't okay. remember which chapter or verse. But okay. it's uh, where God is talking about, uh, where God says, slaughter the animals okay. as I have commanded you. Okay. And yet, before that, he has never commanded us before so, how to do it. So therefore you take that as the oral law? That's just one of the... One of the uh, not... that, yeah, that's one of the things where so, you can realise there must be an oral law. So can you give an, us an example of the Torah where well, we, a we've prophet... we've been through this before, haven't where, we? No, we haven't, we haven't. We've been through the... Uh, no, I didn't finish. The first, in part one, okay. we, didn't, uh, we didn't get to the end of the, uh, the things, the, the proofs of how we know there's an oral law. So is there that any... weird, uh, that weird black Israelite guy. <laughs> Is there any reference to? Is there any reference from a prophet in the Bible mentioning the oral law? 
They don't mention it explicitly. But do they ever reference it? Yes, that's the that's one of the references. No, that that you said that was God's alluding to it. I'm saying, is there oh. a prophet the, who argues from the oral law as an example? I don't think so. I, I, mean, I don't know. I don't okay. Know. So if we stick with the book of Genesis, yeah. when we see it says, God says, let us make man in our image. Can you explain what that means? Sure. There's two explanations. Number one is it's the royal we. The royal we. Right? Number two is that he was consulting the angels in this pivotal, um, in this most pivotal part of creation. He was going to create man. Okay. And he was teaching us the important characteristic of um, that a leader should always consult his, his, uh, those who are lesser than him. So, so with that, I'm going to actually go against your position because I'm going to now are. go to the Rabbi uh, Mishnah. Nah. And see, Rabbi Mishnah. Yeah. Rabbi Mishnah? Let me just see if I can find the reference because Mid Do you because there's Midrash Rabbah? Yeah, sorry, that's it, Midrash Rabbi, okay. which they quote. Um, uh, let me just find. It. I have it. The reference. It's the time, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Because what I did, we can do. We can go to the earliest interpretations of that verse. And they actually go against what you've just said. Let me just find it. Earliest interpretation well, some of, of the verse. All right. So, if I go... Do you know what the earliest interpretations of the verse okay, are? Okay, hold on. They are what are found in the oral law. Okay. Well, we, what we ha so, I've, this is a reference from the Midrash Rabbah. And this is Similai. Okay. Who lived in the third century. Okay. Now, it says... The heretics asked Rabbi Sim Simlai, how many deities created the world? And I and you must inquire of the first day, replied he, as it is written. For ask now of the first days, not since the days God create, God's created Baru, man is written here, but God created Barah. Bara. Yes, right? then they asked him a second time, why is it written in the beginning Elohim plural created? In the beginning, Baru Elohim is not written here. Answered he, but Bara Elohim, the heaven and the earth. Ah Simai, Simlai said, whenever you find a point apparently supporting the heretics, I'm presuming the pe heretics are the ones who believe there's a plurality, which will probably be the Christians. What you find a refutation at its side. They asked him again, what is meant? And God said, let us make man. Read what follows, replied he, but, and God created what Yes. When, they, when he went out, his disciples said to him, them you have dismissed with a mere makeshift. But how will you answer us? He said to them, in the past Adam was created from dust and Eve was created from Adam, but henceforth it shall be in our image and after our likeness. Neither man without woman, nor woman without man, and neither of them without divine spirit. So when he gave them the excuse, as you've just read, his disciples said, when are you gonna give us a proper answer, not this fobbing off that you've done to the heretics? Okay. So therefore there is no such thing as a plurality, because even from the third century, they tried to fob them off with that exact answer. And how did he answer them in the end? You're forgetting the end. Okay, let's... He still did not then, say there's a plurality. Thank you. So There was never so, a rabbinical thing. Thank you thing very much. So, so, the, so, the, so what the, was the proper answer the, in the end? There was there no was proper no answer. Because, was no, the end? because he didn't give them a proper answer. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. Andy, the end. He said to them, in the past, Adam was created from dust and Eve was created from Adam. But henceforth it shall be in our image and after our likeness. Neither man without woman, nor woman without a man, and neither of them without divine spirit. So how is that an answer? How is that an answer? So let's examine. See, see how he's answering the question. Let's examine. Let's and think. Let me just, Use our brains. just for the audience, it says, Elohim is, a, Elohim is in plural form, but Bara is singular. Baru being yeah. plural, yes. thus he answered that the verb is in the singular, so that the plural form of Elohim is merely the plural of majesty. Yes. So that was what he was given to the heretics. Fine. So he said to the heret So he said to the heretics, it was plural of majesty. And then his disciples said to him, when will you give us a proper answer? 
So therefore, there goes out the window your ex <laughs> your definition of plural of majesty. And then he gave a proper answer and still, but then, and so what, still did but not what, what did, plurality. Thank you. But what we have just seen, his first answer was it can refer to plural of majesty. Now, I've gone to a third century rabbi who used the excuse of plural of majesty to the heretics who would have been the Christians. But his disciples saw through that and they said, when will you give us a proper answer? So now that plural of majesty is clearly out the window. So now he's saying he gave let's another and, interpretation. Let's, and yes. let's first of all try and understand what does it mean that he gave them a makeshift answer? Yes. And that he's giving them a proper answer. Okay. okay? Because at the end of the day, yes. okay, at the end of the day, when the heretic is so, talking, like, okay. uh, like you, good sir. Um, it, Thank you very much. Yes. Um, when the heretic is talking, yes. does he really want to know the truth? No. He has a preconceived notion and he wants to, and all he wants to do is attack. That's all he wants to do. Okay. And so Simlai, Rabbi Simlai is, is not lying. Thin, no, to he's, not, refute he's not lying. He's not lying. Okay. I'm going to explain. What he's doing is he's giving them the, the simple answer. The makeshift answer, the excuse, is a simple one which doesn't really address the, the, the more deep point. What's the more deep point? Why, at the end of the day, did it say that did it have this combination of the, of the plural and the singular in the verb and the noun? So, so why didn't he give that, them a the proper question. answer? Why didn't he give them a proper answer? Well, instead of a makeshift answer? So they have this concept a lot in the, in the, uh, uh, amongst the rabbis that you don't think that in those days when the heretics were such a dangerous force, luckily you guys are not so dangerous nowadays, um, I think people are more running away from Christianity rather than joining it. Well, many um, many is Jewish people days. are uh, joining to Christianity. Only the weak-minded ones. Ah, don't know only the what? But many many only Jews are guy, becoming Christians. Only the guys who yeah. don't oh, know Scripture. <laughs> okay, then you see your point goes against you because many Jews are actually understanding sure, what the. For sure, not many. I'd like to see a statistic. All right. In English, yeah. I, I'll get a statistic. And let me just anyway. So read. As I was saying. Yes. As I was saying. Okay. So, so there is a deep question which has a deeper answer, okay? yeah. which is why at the end of the day did God write this, So do you agree plural strange, majesty this, is not this, a legitimate this, this answer? Strange, I think it's a legitimate answer, but you however, just, you just however, saw it's a makeshift however, answer. What does it mean makeshift answer? Okay. Okay? At the end of the day, what he said does sort of answer the question in that, no. look, we see it's singular in the next verse, Okay, so what does it say to you that it is sing one thing here plural, so what can that be? It can be plurality of majesty. But the question is deeper, why did God write it like that? Okay, if he want okay, if he wants us to end up with the with, with realizing that God is singular, okay, then why is he putting this problematic thing in there? And that's what he had to address with, to the disciples. Because the disciples actually want to know what really is going on here. Why did he put it in? Why did God put it in? So he, gave the proper, so he gave them the proper answer, which is the deeper answer. Okay, the answer is why he put that in. He put that in for this, and he gave a deep answer that I don't really understand. I'm going to have to work on that and see what actually is. Yeah, we'll, we'll, go the, 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 we'll go back into the we'll go back into the the rabbi Mishnah. But I just did a quick Google search. Look, one in six American Jews are converts. Okay, so that's, that's the wrong thing. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, let me find it because it, I think there is a statistic, and I'm going to find it. I'm sure you will. And it's quite a high amount, like quite a, a, a good proportion of Jews actually convert to Christianity. Good but proportion. Let me. I'm going to find it because whilst you're explaining this, I'm going to find the verse. But just for the sake of continuity. Ah, so continuity. We've, so, so we've clearly seen Josh is going round in circles going around because in circles we clearly read out from a third century rabbi that gave a makeshift oh a makeshift answer to the heretics about the when it says let god make us in our image he tried to say it was the plurality of majesty and his disciples said why are you giving them a makeshift answer and when will you give us a real answer so clearly we see from the response of his disciples they did not accept his um, explanation and they knew that wasn't the case so therefore then as just said he go then goes on to give another explanation which is not does not go in line with plurality of magic he talked about something completely different and now we're going to go to our Samuel 
B Nam, and this is also in uh, Midrash Rabbah. I, I, I just want to clarify something, just to make sure that the viewer understands the difference between him and me, and how we're looking at this particular thing. Yes. I'm looking at it that obviously this rabbi would not have lied, and he's looking at it as no, well, if, it's absolutely if you are, fine if the rabbi lied. If your dis disciples say you make a makeshift answer, that means it's a, not a proper answer. If it was satisfactory, they would have said, wow, that is a very great answer. This is exactly but the they knew the why. Hebrew and the context of the way the verse was written, they, the they understood it was a makeshift answer. And this is the reason why Gentiles should not be learning the old law. Because they don't know how to learn it. Well, we're we reading, know how to we're learn reading from law. your Midrash Rabbi. I know. Reading so it's, it's not, not my interpretation. We're going reading by the interpretation of the disciples. As learning it. You are taking one interpretation of what it's saying. I'm taking a different interpretation of what it's saying. Okay. I'm saying makeshift does not mean a lie, an outright lie. It means it, robbing it, off it, it means with a, it, a, poor, a, a poor excuse. It means it's answering the question, but it doesn't get into the deep root of the matter. But it's not what, of And what does the proper answer do? It gets to the root of the matter. Why don't you get to the root of the matter of the heretic? Because the heretic's not interested in the root of the matter. He's not interested. No. Because if they were, he would have been interested in giving a true and proper answer. Now I'm going to go, because this verse has been proper. What I, the reason why I'm bringing are you, it up are you, is this, Are you quoting the Old Testament? No, I'm, no. I'm quoting Jewish, oh. li, I'm, no, Jewish literature. But, uh, which, where did it come from? He, ask him. No, not him. You. you this, the this, is called, this is called the Midrash, Midrash Rabbah, no, no. which is the quotations of the uh, rabbis. From which book? The mid, it's called the Midrash Rabbah. So basically, ah. it's a collection. So you're not quoting from the Bible no, or no, no, from no, no, the no. Old Testament? This is, no. this is Jewish sources. Ah, okay, okay. So the opinions of their own rabbis. Ah, okay. And this is from the third century where they've dismissed the plural, plural, plurality of majesty. Then we go to R. Samuel B. Nachman. R. Said, Samuel B. Nachman. Oh, oh, Rabbi Samuel B. Nachman. Said in R. Jonathan's name, when Moses was engaged in writing the Torah, he had to write the work of each day. When he came to the verse and let God said, let us make man, he said, sovereign of the universe, why dost thou furnish an excuse to the heretics? Again, they're understanding that this verse is problematic. And then it says, right, replied he, whoever wishes to err. Well, he's saying God, isn't it? But obviously this is- just making sure of the viewer. Okay, God. So he's claiming God said, God said to Moses, even though we don't find any evidence of this in the Torah, this he says, write Torah. the oral, oral Torah. Torah. Oral but we don't see it in the written Torah. But anyway, let me finish. It's not for the oral Torah. It, it you says, even read the it Bible. Says, right, there replied, no translations. It says, right, replied he, whoever wishes to err may err. Moses said to the Lord, to him, this man that I have created, do I not cause men both great and small to spring from him? Now, if a great man comes to obtain permission for a proposed action from one that is less than he, he may say, why should I ask permission from my inferior? Then they will answer him, learn, I haven't got the rest yeah, of it. that's what I was saying before, consulting so, the lesser ones. Yeah, so basically, what I'm reason why I read this again is because we know from the Jewish perspective, this verse has been problematic and it's not, as they say, the plural, plural of majesty because they that's why that, when I've why wait, let me, because that's why if what the other rabbi who lived in the fourth century which is a hundred years later from the, the first uh, rabbi that I quoted if they understood it as plural of majesty they wouldn't have written this because they've said Moses no. asked God why do you give an excuse to the heretics the, that they can use this verse to suggest that God talks about a plurality and then creating in a singular so therefore, that's why as um, Christians, we say that the, there's a Godhead of a Trinity that it wasn't the angels, because that would have been an explanation that the earliest rabbis would have given. And I'm giving you sources from the third and fourth century. But you believe the Trinity. Yes. They don't. I know. Uh, hold on. But yeah, uh, according, as you the Trinity, yes. is God divine? God is divine. God is divine. And the, the Father, the Son, and, and uh, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Yes. Is the three of them? Which one is divine? They're all divine. They're all divine. Yes. Is is God divine means pure? Is that correct? Now, according to the uh, according to the, the Bible, okay. uh, the Christian belief, okay. God oh, is immortal. Was... According to the uh, 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 Timothy, yes. according to Timothy, yes. 
God is immortal. Which one mortal above the three? Which one is mortal? Which one is They're immortal? All immortal? And I'll tell you why. The Bible says. No, no, hold on, hold on. I'll explain. I'll explain to you. The Bible says, for example. What the question, sir? He he asked. He's, he's basically quoting Timothy, where it says God is immortal. So he's going to ask me how can Jesus die? No, which one is mortal? Which one is immortal? They're all immortal. No, now, but Jesus me, died for three days. Okay, that's I said. That's what I was going to. So one of them to. was mortal. So uh, now, mortal. Is that now, correct? The thing is, this is it. First of all, the Bible says, do not fear man who can kill the, the, the body, but fear God who can kill the soul. Okay. So when God talks about immortality, it's his, uh, it's his immediate nature. Now, the Bible says God is a spirit, right? So if I ask you what is death, death is just the separation of your spirit from your body. So when you die... I know that, I know what yeah, this is. Your conscience is still alive. So when, when Jesus died, mm -hmm. his humanity, his flesh died, but his true nature, but, which was the spirit, but, but did not die. But Jesus as a man... But we're diverting uh, uh, and I don't no, want no, to... Diver to Jesus, Jesus yes. as, a as a man dies yes. for no, three days. This, no, hold right. on. Jesus as a man... I know. Je Jesus, no, because you're... Hold on. Yeah, you, you can your go back to them. Je Let me just ask Jesus, Jesus, yeah. Jesus died for three days. Yes. And you told me the three of them yes. are immortal. Yes. But Jesus was mortal for three days as a man. Okay. So that means okay. one God died, two left. No, that's not you what we believe. Three, you see there are three Because I, I've said to you, we believe God is a spirit. His, his true nature is a spirit. No, so no. all death is, you, is the separation of your spirit no, 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 from no, your body. No, no, no. So God doesn't no, die. No, no. So if we want to continue later, we can address this. But I've answered it. But we're going to go back to, we're going to, go back to his point. So now, you may want to, uh, you know, Yes, creep in with your opinion. So we, the, the Midrash rabbi. So we've now gone to look to see that two of your rabbis have basically given us evidence to show from the first and third and fourth century that the whole concept of a plurality in majesty was a makeshift answer to the heretics. Yeah, now you're, you're gonna have to explain to him. You're gonna no now idea what you're talking about. You, or you, you now are gonna have to give us another interpretation of what this verse means when it says let God God says let us make man in our image. Yeah, but we don't look like God. Okay. Nobody so, looks like God. Do you know what an image is? An image. Something that looks like something like isn't it. Okay. So if we're in God's image, we obviously can't yeah, be God. Because we're in the image. But no one's made that an argument. Image, an image is not a real thing. Yeah, no, no one's I'm made that sure. argument. I'm not sure if you know yeah. about it. I'm so, sure and actually, you know when we, when you say God has an image, oh, God no. has a likeness, and I'll tell you why. Because, image doesn't have to be because, 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 because when we go to the Targums, for example, it talks about the word of the Lord that manifested itself to Abraham, right? Yeah. And for example, actually, let me even go to the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah. What, what is? What is the? Can we explain what the Kabbalah is to people? It's the deep esoteric side of the Torah, which requires has a lot of expert understanding of the main level before you can even begin to deal with it. Is it, is it accepted or rejected by uh, Jews? It's accepted, but you have to be on a certain level to understand it's it properly. It's accepted, okay. But you have to be on oh, a certain level to understand Oh, you are not going to the Dordea. I'm not doing it. No, ask him why he doesn't <laughs> talk about <laughs> Paul. You don't understand Paul, what the it means. The rabbis were okay. working with Paul. I want you Paul. to explain something to me. No, why no, don't you, you talk about the rabbis who works with Paul? Well, that is esoteric. You can't understand it on face level. It's not happening. Okay, I want you to give me an interpretation of this. Please ask him. The rabbis works with Paul. They used to call him Saul. And Paul himself, was working with the rabbis and the rabbis asked him to collect the men and women either christian or jews and bring them to prison that's in the bible that's in the bible according to the book of art i can read it for you it's not in the bible it's in the bible it is it's not in the bible it might be in your greek testament no no it's not the greek testament it's the bible i'm not lying don't say don't say it's not in the bible he's trying to say that's not the real bible don't say it's not in the bible this is a forgery Okay, oh, we're gonna go. The Bible is forged. No, we're gonna go. go we're gonna go to the Zohar. Oh, oh, you man. aren't doing that. Is here, my friend. Look. The Zohar, right? That is from Kabbalah. You see, no. Now, which is all esoteric. So, you okay. We don't understand. Okay, so, uh, Uncle. Uncle. Put him, put him we're, we're gonna have to and move away. In prison. Look. Sammy, your wife is so, Paul worked with a rabbi. <laughs> we're not talking about Paul. <laughs> they don't believe in Paul. <laughs> so, forget. The rabbi. Uncle. Okay, Paul, Sammy. Okay. We're gonna go to the Zohar. 
Now, no, I'm going to read from the Zohar. Not gonna gonna stop stop it. Not gonna now, Zohar. it says, Hear, O Israel, Adonai Elehanu Adonai is one. These three are one. How can the three, the three names be one? Only though, the, only through the perception of faith, in the vision of the Holy Spirit, in the holding of the hidden eye alone. The mystery of the audio, audible voice is similar to this. One, yet it consists of three elements, fire, air and water, which have, however, become one in the mystery of the voice. Even so, it is with the mystery of the threefold divine manifestation designated by Adonai, Elohanu, Adonai, three modes which form yet one unity. This is the significance of the voice which man produces in the act of unification when his intent is to unify all from the infinite Ein Sof to the end of creation. Do you know what those names actually mean? What these manifestations are? The three modes. No, it's not, yeah. First, uh, we can't say those names properly because if you if you ever read the Ten Commandments, okay. Well, you've just broken the third one. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> we, we 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 disagree with that about. It says, don't take the Almighty to the Ten Commandments. Huh? It says don't take the Almighty to the Ten You um, take it to the extreme. We don't. We don't. We use it when we're praying. But anyway, so the yeah. first name is his expression. But it says of, there's three modes or one. Yes, because he God is merciful. Okay. He has his, his uh, what do you call it? How do you say leader in English? No, but he's also punishable. But I remember, I'm quoting from Jewish text. a characteristic of mercy. And there's also the characteristic of justice. Okay. So that first name is his mode of mercy. Okay. When he rules the world in a merciful way. The second name is the God who judges people as a harsh judge. And the reason, but it's one God, he has different... So we're things. seeing from the esoteric so knowledge of the Kabbalah, that they believe that there's a plurality that forms three modes Some, that form yeah, one. Listen, sometimes you can get one person yes. who has to behave differently in different situations. Okay. You can get a man who goes to a funeral and he's very somber, he's very quiet, and then he goes to a wedding and he's jumping around dancing and singing. It's the same person, but different situations require a different mode of behavior. And just because God behaves differently under different circumstances doesn't mean that there's more than one God. Okay, now I'm going to go again into the Zohar. This is volume three. I'm just going to read it because what I want people to understand is when we even go with, within the Jewish text, not even Christian text, they understood there was a threeness of God. He's given his explanation, but I'm going to give one more thing from the Zohar, which he has said is okay within Judaism. And it's an esoteric knowledge. Now it says, come and see the mystery of the word Yehovah. There are three steps. That's right, let me, okay. I'll say Hashem for you, all right? Hashem means the name, by the way. I know, I know. So that's, uh, that's so, why we say that. Yeah, I know. Because they take it to the extreme, but that's, that, but that's fine. Uh, just in front of you, I'll say Hashem, that's fine. It says, come and see the mystery of the word Hashem. There are three steps, each existing by itself. Nevertheless, they are one and so united that one cannot be separated from the other the ancient holy one is revealed within the ancient holy one is revealed with three heads which are united into one and that head is three exalted the ancient one is described as being three because the other lights emanating from him are included in the three but how can three names be one are they really one because we call them one how three can be one can only be known through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. So exactly. Now, that was, you see the end sentence. It can only be known through the revelation. Uh, so has someone who's not seen the revelation of the Holy Spirit doesn't okay. understand what these words are talking about. All right. So now, That's what I was saying so now to the audience, what I'm trying to say is well, within classical Jewish texts, they're understanding there's a threeness within the Godhead within God. But it's said now, explicitly we have, that we, you can't us understand Us Christians what that have given a definition of the Father, the Son and the Holy well, Spirit. The They're going to give a different interpretation. No, but it doesn't, that. it doesn't negate the fact that it talks about no, God has, no. it says God has three heads. The very, right? the he very reveals himself in three modes. Yes. The very source that you're quoting it says you can't understand you can't it. Understand they will never it. Be so able how able can you bring proof listen. from something which says, a text says at the bottom, you do not understand Because what I'm trying to say, because what I'm trying to say, if, 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 according to the Shema, God is one. 
You would yeah. not. Okay. You would not no. then, according to the Shema, the sh I say Shema, the Shema, if you want me to say it properly, it says God is one. Now we're seeing within Jewish classical texts that they're now associating a threeness to God. Us Christians have given three characteristics, three modes, three heads, whatever you want to call it. Now the Christians, what we're trying to say is from the Old Testament, they've now, from their esoteric knowledge, understood that there is some sort of divine plurality within Godhead. Now, whether, whatever you... The Bible you... says explicitly that God is one, and the Ten May I refer so, you to the second so of the Ten why isn't Do you know the, what the second of the Ten Why in the command... Do you know the second Kabbalah? Do you know the second Kabbalah? Because commandment also what I will do next is one, one of the great Kabbalists That's actually first. converted to Christianity. You must have any others. No, the, no, the Ten Commandment doesn't say that. No, 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 no. I'll no, find no, his no. name because you know uh, some of no, the great Kabbalists the have actually the converted to Christianity, ah, and there was a. a um, I don't know if you're aware of him. One of the big Kabbalists who actually revealed the name of the Messiah as Yeshua. And if you're not aware. I can find the reference if you've come across there are it. People who come up with that name, but I think okay. they're just basically but like they want been to make it sound similar. <laughs> oh, to ah, the name you see, uh, you see, assumption. he's aware of the, and we it was a very, it was a, no, 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 it was a very big. Um, Kabbalist rabbi, oh, I'll get his name. Oh, no, but they believe one God. Do they, they, you know his name? No, no, but they. Ah, you see, they're aware of him. So what I'm saying is. Basically, there's a myth going around amongst no, the Christians. No, it's not a myth. It's a myth. No, it's, it's a myth. Please. Are it's you trying to convert them? No. It's a, there's a myth what going I'm, around. Why are you trying to convert them? I'm not trying to convert them. But they believe one they God. Convert. So what, okay. what are you trying I've to convert I've given you the evidence yeah. from their own sources that show that they yeah. even know that there's a plurality. But plurality when it says mean God says, God. let us make man in our image, yeah, but, they said it was a plurality yeah, okay. of, but, uh, of majesty. But, but does anybody look like God? No, because I've gave, I went to the Midrash Rabbah and I read to Josh, you weren't here, that the disciples of, um, how do you say it, Semai, Rabbi Salmai. Sal Salmai, he gave that to the heretics as an answer. And then his disciples said to him, why do you give this makeshift answer to the heretics? When will you tell us the true answer? So therefore they rejected the plurality of majesty and the angels as you were alluding to. And that is a third century. You have completely disregarded century. my interpretation of no, that. No, because what we're you saying... You completely disregarded Because what we're saying, if the disciples the say... Let him say what well, he says. The problem, the here, yes. than you the problem in this says. discussion is yes. that you are unwilling to listen to any other points of view. Every time a different point of view is offered, you just brush it aside and carry on. Because your, your view goes against the text. Because what no, happened is, he didn't exp expand, expand on the plurality of the angels and stuff he gave an, a different ex, a different answer not that's not what i said but I well, let's go can we go to the wait, text wait, wait, again wait, wait, hold, on hold on a second because what happened is can i can i make a point yes let's say mm. you've got your way of interpreting the text okay and he's got his way of interpreting the text all right and both ways sound plausible okay so it could be like you're saying could be like his saying the mere fact that there are two plausible ways of explaining the text okay means that neither of you can actually prove your point oh. to the other okay so you can't prove your point the mere fact that his version is, is plausible can, can you go to isaiah 48 for me please ah he's jumping again no because now he's said we both have plausible I say, argumentation. I'm not saying you are plausible, I'm I know. saying even if both yes. sides are plausible. So I'm, as long as he has a plausible right. That's why we're going to the Bible now. As long as he has we're a plausible explanation of what you're saying, you haven't got a, a strong right, let's go to the Bible. Yeah. Isaiah 48. Jumping around. No, because now I'm going to give point. him evidence to reinforce my interpretation. Alright. From the, from, the, uh, from the scripture. Go ahead. Uh, you can start from... 10, read to about yeah, 18. If, yeah, but if you go to Hosea, he say, I am God, I'm not a man. He say, I am not a man. Well, we're going to, can you, can you read it out for us? He say, I am God, I'm not a man. From See, verse 10. I do not a silver. I test the furnace of affliction for my sake, for my own sake. No, no, they don't like to talk about this. my name be dishonored, I will not give my glory to the Lord. And who's talking? But I know your people believe one God. Is that right? I have to check from the beginning. That's what is good about it. You don't believe in God or one God. Listen to this. Where's it saying? 
So how do you explain? Oh, see, I see, I am God, I'm not a man. And Jesus was a man. You're listening to too many Muslims. No, you don't learn. You don't learn the Bible from Muslims. Come to a Christian, and we'll give you a, a proper explanation. How can I come to Christian? How can I come to Christian? Come to a Jew if you want to know So now you have God speaking, right? How can I come to Christian? If you continue, how many geologists? Wait, 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 wait. How many geologists are you, Jacob? Well, yeah. called. I am he, I'm the first, and I am the last as well. Yeah. My own hand founded the earth, my right hand spreads out the skies. Yeah. That seems like it's got to be. Okay. I call to them and let them stand up, assemble all oh, of them. No, don't, don't, no, no, you're falling into his trap. What trap? I've had See, this before. Very clever. Well, then you can very explain. clever. No, no, I want him to explain it. No, no, because you've explained, now I want him to Which explain Which do you want me to explain? Yeah, keep going. Give him a chance, give him a chance, Josh. Him who the Lord loves shall work, his, uh, shall work against Babylon. Shall remember this one. And with his might against Chaldea. I predicted and I called him, I brought him and he will succeed his mission. Draw near to me in this. From the beginning do I speak, do I, did I not speak in secret? From, from the time anything exists, I heard. Always the same thing. Yeah. Never How much further? First, first to yeah, third. Yeah, keep going. Now the Lord God has sent me in those with His spirit. Every single Thus said the Lord God that's, that's, yes. that, that's it. Now, read that verse again. Which verse? 16. Draw to me in here this. In the beginning I did not speak of secret. From, from the time anything existed I was there. And now the Lord God has sent me in those with His spirit. Now God's speaking. You don't believe that kind of stuff. Earlier. So who's sending God? Well, obviously it wasn't it's a fun speaking. Sunday afternoon. Oh, well, I can't. Ah. The speaker can change. It's tape. Give me your explanation. That's a joke. I presume. Remember, I said earlier, I didn't actually know that God was the speaker. But you've just read where it confirmed it was God. So now you can give me your interpretation. Because you've just read God speaking and now God has somehow said he's sent himself. I said that earlier verses, not here. Okay, yeah. So tell me who's speaking. A prophet. The prophet. Obviously earlier, mm. remember I hadn't seen the beginning of the text, okay. I remember that. So when I said it sounds like God's speaking, that was okay. obviously a prophet quoting God. So read 16 again. And now the prophet's saying that God sent him. Read so what's your proof? Okay, read 16 again. Yeah. Say, say it out again. Draw near to me and hear this. In the beginning I did not speak in secret. The time in the thing existed I was there. And now, and now the Lord's God has sent me in with his spirit. Okay. So that's the end of a quotation, and now the Lord God has sent me. So he's he's quoting what God says, and then I was saying now so, God has sent me. So you, your your excuse is that there's a very simple, straightforward explanation. No, it's not. Okay, let me just get my um my uh oh oh you don't want to talk. Don't worry. I'll deal with you another time. Don't worry. I'm not a Palestinian. Don't worry. I'm okay with that. Don't worry, I'm not. I'm not Just, what evidence do you have that it is the prophet speaking? Even if they are rich. The evidence being that he uh, says the Lord has sent me. So therefore you presume that it's the prophet speaking. Obviously, if the Lord has sent him, he is obviously, uh, unless he's a fake prophet, of course. But if the Lord has sent him, then so he's a prophet. So he's endowed with his spirit. Yeah, but do you know what having divine spirit means? It means you're able to connect with... So he's saying he's connected with... Prophet. So he's saying... So in your explanation, God has sent him. If God has sent me, as you yourself said, if God has sent me, the speaker can't be God. Okay, now let me just get the... Did he try to do the first person, third person trick again? Yeah. I thought so. Now, it, doesn't it says, work. come ye near oh, yeah. unto me. I love it. Hear ye I this, I have spoken not in secret from the beginning, from the time it was. So it was the prophet from the time it was. Yeah, okay, read it 16 again. Draw near to me and hear this. From the beginning I did not speak in secret. From the time anything existed, I was there. So from that's the beginning of that's when? Obviously, that's obviously the quotation from God. End oh, quote. that's the... Uh, okay. End quote. The prophet quoting God. And Is there quotation marks? The Bible doesn't actually have any punctuation in, okay. it, in its original form. There's, uh, you, you've got you've got paragraphing, and that's about it. There's no full stops. There's no quotation marks. So, so you're, no, so you're saying even vowels, so you're because you guys don't have, because you guys don't even have an. Through that verse, then it switches to the prophet from God speaking to the prophet. From God's from the prophet's quotation to the prophet's own. Can words. you give me? That's a very simple straight. Can you give me uh, any other example in the Bible where that happens? In uh, Deuteronomy, it's full of Moses telling people what God said and then adding his own like words. Moses says, thus saith the Lord. Yeah. And so then I'm saying, little, uh, I'm saying, give me another 
just one example to prove your point that where we see one, one paragraph where God is speaking and then somehow quickly changes to the prophet speaking. What's the verse? Because I would say your interpolation is inconsistent with the rest of the Bible. What's the verse? Isaiah 48, 16. What, what is it? Uh, it says, um, it doesn't really matter if you can find another example because it's just going to say the same thing there. It says, <laughs> come, ye, come ye near into, unto me, hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, yes, from the, the time that it was. There I am, and now the Lord God and His Spirit has said. Also, me. another point, as you yourself said, the beginning of what? Yes. The beginning of what? Oh, I'm asking you for your interpretation. Because no, so I'm saying you're trying to be a proof of it. Now, because, are you trying because, to say because if we because of... if we start at the beginning of Isaiah, God's speaking about Him being the Creator from What's the your beginning. End goal, by the way. I mean, we know because your end goal. My, my end goal. We become, we should become no, no, that's not my end point. But my my end point is this: when we go to the scriptures. We see, apparently the Jews have the best interpretation, but they even come across problematic verses. That's why even when we start with Genesis and it says, let us make God, let, God said, let us make man in our image. They said it was a plurality of majesty, but we went to their third century rabbi, third century, it's a long time ago, who dismissed, who, well, who his disciples said to him, this is a makeshift answer. So therefore, when the Jews say to you, it's a plurality of ma majesty. They're giving you also a makeshift answer. So as the disciples, we are coming to you to say, give us the true interpretation of this disciple, verse. You are a It doesn't matter. You know, but that's what I'm saying. So we have clearly seen from history, a saying, it's a makeshift answer. There is but a they're saying. trying to give us a makeshift a answer saying. and we're not saying. accepting it. There is a saying, you know, you answer a fool according to his foolishness. No, if, if you look, if that's you look... Not, no. no, no. You if you look, don't answer if a fool look, according to his folly. He says you do. Anyway, if you look, um, when Joseph mm. is in Egypt okay. and Potiphar's wife wants to seduce him, yes. he, he gives her two answers. Okay. First he says, look, your, your husband trusts me very well. Okay. And then he says, I will be sinning to God. Okay. Now here are two different reasons for the same act, or the same refusal, I should say. Okay. Now you would have thought, what's more important? The fact that your husband trusts me so much, or the fact I'd be sinning to God? Surely sinning to God is a more serious issue. Singing to God. Sinning to God, yeah. Oh, sinning. Yeah. Sorry, you thought I said singing. No, sinning. <laughs> okay. um, sinning to God uh, is obviously more of a serious issue than the, the betraying the... Uh... And yet, what did he answer first? He answered. So we can see, he answered the fool according to her foolishness. Okay. He, he gave an answer. That both answers were correct. He had two different reasons why he had to refuse. And he started with the answer that he knew would go down with. So now you're, you quote, let's say, a rabbi saying, well, that's the answer I have to give the heretics. Yeah. It could be there's two proper answers, but maybe the answer he didn't give is probably a, more, is, is, is a better answer. But the answer, but I, can read, answer. I can read you the answer, and it's still not good. But he has to give the answer. It. He has okay. to give the answer that's All appropriate right. so to the mindset I'm, of the person okay. who's Now, this is what I'm going to questions. do. I'm going to read it. Josh has already given his interpretation. Now I'm going to read it for you and see what your explanation and we'll see if you both came to the same conclusion. <laughs> and even if we come to a different conclusion, does that matter? Then it will seem problematic. As I said, sometimes you can have when two different When three of us have same. different interpretations, why is it only problematic to us? Pardon? Why? When three no, of us, when every saying, single one of us have different saying, interpretations, why does that, that mean you're, that yours is you're superior saying, to ours? He's saying that the answer was clear. So I'm going to ask, ask As you I, can I, can and I, see if it is can still I remind, clear. Can I remind you of that, of that parable of Joseph, and his, uh, Joseph who gives two reasons. They are two very different reasons, but they are both good on, enough on their own. You can have two different reasons for the same thing. Okay. You can have more than one motive for doing something. And either motive would be enough on its own. And therefore they are both valid reasons by themselves. And therefore they don't contradict each other. So if we give a different explanation for the same verse, that's not a problem. Well, it would mean that the, his answer wasn't a clear answer either. No, it can mean that they're both valid answers, but you only need, either one by itself would be sufficient. Well, if it was clear, you would both have the same understanding if it was that clear. Like, for example, you do not have a disagreement about Hear, O Israel, your Lord God is one. You both say it's crystal clear. So you both have the same interpretation. So therefore, if we go to his interpretation, explanation, and it differs, then it's not crystal clear. Now, well, according to that, if my interpretation differs from yours, then the whole verses are not crystal clear. Well, so you can't bring a proof from them. But my, my interpretation oh, that's an interesting is obviously clear to the audience. 
and I'm just gonna we'll close on this final. Um, Okay, so I will, we can close on this because within the plurality, the Christian perspective is that Christ was the word of the Lord, right? Now, when we read the Old Testament, you would take when it says the word of the Lord came to me as something other. A prophecy. So you would say it was a prophecy, right? The word of the Lord came to me. What's the word of the Lord? A word. It's just a prophecy. What do you want? In, it's a word. In what? Yeah. In, it's a word. If a word of the Lord just never mind, get, uh, you know, deep explanations. If you look at it like simple dictionary definitions, the yeah. word. Okay. Of the Lord, what's the word? Some, word. Something non-physical. It's, it's a, a word. word. Okay. Oh, something you hear. A word. A word. Yes. Okay. Can we go to the book of Jeremiah? Oh, just open straight on. Ah, great. Verse one. Of which chapter? Chapter one. Verse one, chapter one. Because it's a word, as they said. It's a word. So, let's see now your explanation. You're really doing that, aren't you? Oh, guy. Wait, yeah, wait, are you the there as well, John? Words. Who wants to read? Who would like to read it? Yes, the words of Jeremiah, son of uh, Hiccup, one of the precepts. Enough in the Toby of Benjamin. So what? Ex what, what this priest is now quoting those words. Okay. So okay, yeah. Continue. The word of the Lord came to him in the days of King Joshua, son of Ammon of Yehuda, in the thirteenth reign okay. of his reign. So that would be a, a prophecy of vi of vision. The word of the Lord came to him. Came to him. Okay, that's fine. Continue. So it's a vision. Vision or, or prophecy? Sorry. Word. Sorry, a prophecy. Yes. Sound. A sound. Words. A sound came Words. to him. Okay. Continue. And throughout the days of uh, King Joachim, son of Yosh of Yehuda, until the end of the eleventh year, King King Sizkiah, son of Yosh of Yehuda, when Jerusalem went into exile in the fifth month. Okay. Continue. The word of the Lord came to him. Another hearing. He's hearing. Yeah. Okay. Before I created in the womb, I selected you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you as a prophet concerning the nations. Okay. So now we're reading that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and he's hearing it said before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation so God is obviously communicating to Jeremiah and, God and he's is hearing not bound it. by time so he knows who's going to be born and who's going okay, to make it to a continue yes. I replied our oh Lord God I don't know how to speak for I'm still a boy. Yeah. And the Lord said to me, do not say I'm a boy, but wherever, you, but wherever I send you and speak with you, and speak whatever I command you. I have no fear of them, for I'm with you to deliver you. Because of okay. Yes. Now, we're seeing the communication with God as well. The communication, he's hearing from God, he's communicating back. Now, yes. next verse. How many more verses? Last one. The Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. What? Read that again. Oh, Allegorical. Yes. Ah, can you read it again? The Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, said the Lord said to me, Ah, hereforth I put my words into your mouth. So, we have, as he said, an allegorical hand which touched his mouth. Because God himself says that he's not physical. Ah, because God himself says he's not physical. So we clearly see in this verse, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Have you ever Chris, heard of somebody saying, I welcome you with open arms? Does that mean literally they do this or is it a figure of speech? Accord, let's stick to what this says. Stretch, now, not it question. says, You're when not you stretch out your hand, giving charity to someone is often referred to as stretching out your hand to them. Doesn't necessarily okay. mean you have to do so that. So give me another biblical verse where this expression sure. is used. Sure. That the word of the Lord put out his hand and touched someone's mouth. No. It says the Lord's put out. It doesn't say the word of the Lord. Okay. The sorry. Lord's put out his hand. All right. Yeah. Sorry. That they've and corrected put me. His word. So now we see because remember, Chris, they said it was a hearing, but now the God who's not physical has somehow put his hand on Jeremiah's mouth. But then this seems very strange ah. for him to be hearing. Here we go. Yes. Um, it says in. So, so clearly we've seen the interaction because Christians say Christ was the word of the Lord and we see Christ in the Old Testament as the word of the Lord communicating with the prophet but then we see this non-physical thing and then somehow God who obviously is not cannot enter creation 
who's not a man, puts out his hand and touches Jeremiah's mouth. God writes so, explicitly in the Bible that he's not a man. Okay. Okay. It says you ever heard of uh, um, Bilam's prophecies? Bilam. Yeah. Okay. He says I'm God not a man is not. That I do not lie. God is not a man. That I do not lie. Uh, it was actually quite a different verse, but yeah. That okay. As well. So it's, right. it's talking about his context, not his actual. You want context? So now, yeah, read That's what you're so going to say. Of we're you. we're going to wrap up after this. So give us your. Remember, the, 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 what, the Lord has to put his hand I don't on someone's Jesus mouth. Jesus is going to be very happy. You wanted context in the Bible. Um, it says here uh, in Leviticus chapter 25, verse 47. Okay. And when a convert uh, and a resident um, shall shall cause shall cause a hand to reach with you. Um, is that literally a hand? I don't think That's so. the different context. You want context? Yeah, I was thinking, we're I said, to I said, said give me, I said, give me another example where God, because if this is like a commonality, we're for example, we see the, the word stretching out a hand can be used in a figurative manner. Okay, okay. You give me the verse. That is verse. what I am proving. Uh, give me, okay, give me the verse. It's Leviticus chapter 25, verse 47. 47. Translating okay. the verse literally. If a sojourner or stranger wax rich by thee and thy brother. Okay. Says, okay. Yeah. Right. 47. They're using a metaphorical translation. I'm translating but let me just read, that's fine. Let me read it anyway. Yeah. This is the literal translation. So say, give me the literal translation. And when the hand of a stranger and resident shall reach with you. Okay. Yeah, we read it. Carry on. So what do you and, understand? Uh, now? And your brother is uh, is impoverished with you. Okay. And he and he is and he is sold as a, as a resident convert with you, uh, or for an uprooting of the family of a convert. So it says when the sojourner's hand shall reach you. Yes. Okay. Does that literally need to be a hand? But Does it? Yes or no? Does it literally need to be a hand? In that context, I would just say no, it doesn't have to be. So, based on your nonsense earlier about okay. applying one thing to another, your at home okay. you were doing earlier. So now, your, when, uh, when we go... and a line, please, it's on a Because, oh, wait, 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 let me... Was that his hand or not? Was that his hand? When God wrote the Ten Commandments was his hand? With his finger. Was that his fingers or not? It wasn't a physical hand. How do you know? Prove it, how do you know? Because God said he's not a man. No, See, you know this is, the they now go so to the, the hand, <laughs> this is where Muslims hand learn this uh, explanation from, or Maimonides. If, if God wait. is not a man, he doesn't have a hand as well. But wait, so it's a, a man has a hand, hand. right? So if he's okay. not a man, Figurative. so how can okay. he have a hand? But now, yeah. we, we clearly... He has a hand, but his hand, is not, his hand is not what we would call a hand, it's a completely different it's hand. For those who are confused, people here on that side are very, very, finding very difficult to acknowledge that we can actually be talking figuratively okay. in the Bible. So now, when we go back to the Jeremiah, we'll go to that one afterwards and we can quickly wrap because we don't want to go on for well, too long. Well, you said quickly so, wrap for quite a, quite right, a while ago. Because clearly, we see it and says... I hate to see the long wrap. We see John, Jeremiah has said that the Lord put out his hand and touched his lips. As in a literal thing, not as in when you're quoting Leviticus where it's talking in the whole context it seems to be talking metaphorically we're seeing he's saying that god re put out his hand and touched my lips says because who? says your prophet no yes. where does the prophet say it's literal and even if you are honestly, claiming okay you are making where does an assumption, it where does it friend. okay so where does it say where does it say it wasn't assume, literal so you're assuming as well when you assume yes you make an ass out of you so you're me. assuming no. too you are the one because you've presumed it isn't because God physical. says he's not a man. No. From there we can derive. And God, God said he spoke to a Moses physical, face to face as you would a friend. God is not physical. Then so, therefore, all so, of these so things is, is where God, God speaks in a physical way. Okay, let's go to that verse. Is all metaphorical. It, that, that one. It's all numbers. Figurative. I mean, for example. Well, look at the context of it because you loved context. So we'll go to it. What is it? Numbers what? Of course, I love context. But you're a Christian. Sometimes when you're trying you to describe, like the wait, wait, wait. Sometimes. Let's look at this verse first. Numbers what? I can't remember off the top of my head. Where it says, God, I'm not a man. I'm not a man is in Hosea. Oh, Hosea. I can't remember which chapter. Because there's the numbers one as well. There is, there is. I can't remember numbers two. 
Exactly. Um, yeah, let's, let's look at the verse. So you lot don't want to look at the verse so we can look at it. I can't remember the source. I remember there's one in Numbers, one in Hosea. I don't remember where exactly. You don't know? Okay. The thing is, these chapter divisions aren't our chapter divisions, you know. Yeah, but that's So fine. we don't always know what the, you know, the, the, the chapter verse reference, because that was actually created by a Christian. Okay. Uh, anyway, when you're trying to de describe God, God mm. being the supreme being, yeah. we can't... To describe him properly, you'd have to speak in a term that no people could understand. Therefore, God has to speak in terms that we can understand. That's why God speaks in terms of his hand, because how else do you understand? It says in the Bible that God uh, describes his voice as like the roar of a lion. Obviously, much greater than that. But it's the roar of a lion because we have to have something that we can relate to. Now, and when it says by, by Saddam, the overturning of Saddam, it says the smoke grows like the smoke of a lion. Pit. Obviously, it was much more than that. But we haven't seen anything like the smoke of Saddam. So therefore, it says like the smoke of a lion. Pit, so that we've yeah, got when something it's, that when it says like, it becomes a simile automatically. Like is a simile, but without like you have metaphors. Yes. So now, we clearly read... When it speaks about the hand of God, there, there is obviously this concept of a divine hand, but what does it mean? It's totally beyond us. If God calls it a hand, okay. put it into a context that we can understand, we can relate to it. So, because we, we clearly saw it with Jeremiah, the word of the Lord kept coming to him, and he was conversating. Now and you said it was him hearing. Then we get to verse 9 where it says even the Lord if, put out his hand and touched his even lips. Even if it's a physical hand, which I'm not saying it is, but even if, yes. does that mean that it's somebody else other than God? No. Good. So what are you trying to get at? It wouldn't be someone else, it would be God. So, so what's the point you're actually trying to get at? So my point was this, point is Jesus. because the, the, Jesus. The, 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 the Bible or the Christian belief, as with the, um, with, as with the Kabbalah, that believes that the word of the Lord can manifest itself within the Sephiro. Yes? What? The Sephiro. Yeah, you know, you have the, the Shekinah, the word of the Lord, oh, Shekinah. Shekinah, and the word of the Lord, which would be the Memra in the Targum. So these are things that are, can be physical manifestations. We say God, Christ, was that manifestation of the word. So now when I said Shekinah and the word of the Lord, you understood the, the Sephiro. Sephiro, how do you say it? I have no idea what you're Sephiro. talking about. Sephiro. What are you talking about? Sephiro. Oh Sephiro. no, you're talking about the Sephiro. Yeah. Within the Sephiro, there are different attributes of God, for example, that can manifest. Say anywhere, but it doesn't say anywhere that he's going to Yeah, but what I'm saying to you is this. In fact, from the, from, let me, I'll tell you what it does say. Now, like what I'm saying to you is this. We clearly see from the Christian perspective that God, Jesus was the word of the Lord. And now we see in this verse that um, Jeremiah is conver conversating with God but it says the word of the Lord came to him and then it says the Lord touched brought out his hand and touched his mouth whereas their interpretation was that it was just him hearing something but then they said when the word the Lord put out his hand and touched his lips this is now a figur figuratively speaking now we've clearly gone through for example, starting with Genesis, where it says, let, God says, let us make man in our image, which was a problematic verse. And we see from their earliest rabbis, it's problematic. So after they find what they're looking for, we can then wrap up and conclude. Wait, 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 just looking for a particular verse. Where, where's, where's the, um... Oh, yeah, here, a bit further up, hold on a Because oh, you're doing that again. Right. Uh, can you can you do you know what it says in in uh, Exodus 33? We break down today, people The pl the Trinity oh. or the plurality in God. Actually, us is breaking down the Trinity. He's trying to uphold it. Oh, you're breaking it down, yes? Yeah, we're breaking it down. We're getting rid of it. You're getting rid of it. Joshua, I've asked you to put Exodus 33. What do you believe in? Okay. What do you believe in? But he said, you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. Can't say that. Okay. So there you go. Now. You can't see God and live. Now, no. He said, you cannot see my face and live. And did God not, did God not say to me, Abraham, um, did God not say, Moses, he used to speak Moses to Moses face to face as you would a friend. Yeah, but face to face ah. is a, it's a figure of speech that means direct so, communication. So now it's a figure of speech. But it, why isn't this one a figure of speech? Because face to face right. is a phrase. Okay. But here it says explicitly, no as man, you would a it says, listen, it says, no, you cannot see my face because no man can see me in this. 
Now, and we have no, this other guy. This general of the God's face. He says he saw him from behind. Yes. So no one can. So if you want to claim that a certain says, human being says, is God in physical says, form, then anyone who looks Moses, at him will be dead. It says Moses saw God's form. Yes. Shall we go to the verse? Shall we go to the verse? Shall we go to the verse? He did see his face. Ah, so now you are alluding to that he did see his form. But hold on a second. Ah. If the man who you believe to be the Messiah was God in human form, then anyone who looked at his face would have instantly died. No, because that's now taken out of context. No, it's not. It says no one. No. Can, it says no man can see my face and live. Because so obviously. What about when we die and we see God in heaven? Are we going to die when we see his face? After you die, it says no man can but see hold my on. face and live. No, no, so, was, so hold when on. we die, I think and see him. Wasn't it Jeremiah? Who saw God on your God on his, didn't Je wasn't it Jeremiah? So we're gonna die in heaven, yeah? I think Jer wasn't it Jeremiah who saw God on his throne? Pardon? Jeremiah saw God on his throne. He didn't see his face, he saw God. Ah. So, when he God so you see, he's admitted a prophet did see God on his throne. Gotcha! So, so, so he saw God, he saw God on his throne. Since so the present seeing God means sensing his presence. The presence. But he said he saw him on his throne. He sensed the presence of the Almighty. He sensed it. Seeing can also mean uh, understanding that something's there, being aware of something. It's a sense. It's a sense. Ah. So you see? Don't you say, for example, it says, uh, "See, I present before you good and evil." Okay. Is that a is that an image that you're seeing? Well, if we we're going off topic, on, but no, no, we're trying to find okay. what the meaning of the words. Yes. But okay. we we can give a, a conclusion yes, wait, wait, and then you can give a conclusion say, well, a second. after this. Uh, yes, the verse I'm referring to is, is uh, Deuteronomy 11.26. Yes, sorry, go on. Deuteronomy 11.26. Deuteronomy. Where you'll see 11. that the word seeing doesn't necessarily mean seeing a physical image. See, I'm sitting before you today a blessing and a curse. Is that something that you see physical? Well, it says the blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God. What so did therefore, you see? You what? So, you so, so, so clearly, the blessing you see it to happen when it happens, you see it. Seeing is, under, is, 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 is an expression of understanding. So what was the verse again? 11, 24. Seeing, the word see, or the Hebrew equivalent, I should say, because let's not get bogged down in pedantics of English, because the Hebrew word re'e, which has been translated as see, that word doesn't necessarily mean seeing a, a visual image. It's having a perception of something. That's what the word means. The perception. So you can have a perception of God on his throne. Doesn't mean you see a physical image. But blessing is visual though. And curse is visual. They're both are visual. As I say, you can't get bogged down in the semantics of the English language. But if you're being blessed, this is something visible, right? The blessing is visible. Visible? Yeah, for example, if God gives you a land, the land is your blessing, so it's visible, right? Bless you in all sorts of ways. You can't see a but blessing. But my point is, blessing is 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 a, is a very very cursed. By for example, um, people are standing but, there. But if you, for example, is addressing the nation, listen. and he says, "See, I present." Look, you. if you are cursed by, for example, your skin changes and have a disease, that curse is visible, right? Yes. So what's the point? It's not always visible. But it's but it can be visible. Moses is saying, see, I have presented before you a blessing. Look, what did they see? So how do you know that blessing or curse wasn't visible or, or, or was? How do you know that? He's telling but wait, what's going on. But how would you know but that? Do you, but do you know the, the whole point about that verse where it says no one can see God yeah. and uh, live? That actually goes with the, what, the Christian perspective. Well, not really. Because, because, they believe because when we look in the Targums, you, if you're aware of the Targums, you had the Memra which was a physical manifestation of God, God's representative. So therefore, the representative, for example, Jacob wrestled, wrestled who? You're saying the angel. Look, an ambassador. Oh, wait, okay. An ambassador who's, who's is the representative who, of the king, but he's not the king. Who, who did Jacob wrestle? An angel. So is he a liar when he said, I've seen God in the As I say, Are you calling see, your prophet no, a liar? No. Because seeing, as I've said, the Hebrew word of the, the Hebrew equivalent of seeing is okay. perception. When he's wrestling with the angel, yeah. he can sense the presence of God. Oh, he can sense it. He said, I've seen the Lord. As I said, there's no point getting bogged he down said, in the pedantic of because, no, because he said, I have seen God and I have survived. Because he was shocked that he was still alive. Because so therefore, the he, you would not say that if you believed it was just an angel because you know you could see an angel and be okay. But his shock was because he saw God. And unless you're calling him, him a liar, who is not alive, therefore, he said he saw God. So then he said he saw God. You're bringing too much yes. from the precise definitions of the English words that you see in your Bible. No. But those are just... No, because even in the Hebrew, uh, Jacob said he saw God. 
but, but, the, but the words, which, the words which you're quoting, yes. as I've said, that word means perception. Perception. But is he lying when he, he said? No, he's, he's, he's perceived. So why was he shocked that he still li lived? Maybe because God sent an angel to fight him. I mean, if God sends what? an angel to attack you, wouldn't you be surprised that you survived? No, but that's not. That's that's not that's that's going what, taking the birds way out of context. Because clearly he was surprised that he had seen God, and as well, who did Hagar see? She saw angels. An angel, but she said she saw God. No, she didn't. No. That's your mistranslation. A mistranslation, okay. So short as where it says angel. Short <laughs> shall we go? Shall we go? Shall we go? We're see what Hagar angel, says, and we'll close. You claim, uh, he and she saw angel, right? So much Can short as the word angel in, 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 in the Hebrew. Short as the word angel, please. Verse seventeen. You'll find four. You'll find four angels coming. God heard the cry of the boy, and an angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said, "Four. Ah, oh, I was just sorry, Abraham." So of Abraham. You said who did Hagar see? Okay, no, I'm saying are you yeah, you're going to the story of Abraham. So oh, this is the story of Hagar actually. Oh, okay. Are you? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, go on. An angel calls to him. Come and lift the boy. It just says an angel spoke to her. Okay, now go to Genesis 16. Uh, you can start from what well, verse 7? By any chance an angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water? You can start from wherever you want. 10, 7, 11. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Go Is this 11? Yeah, and okay. the, 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 the verse 11, the angel of the Lord said to her, Further behold, you're with child. Yeah. And you will call him Yishmael, for the Lord has heard your suffering. Yeah. 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 Continue. And uh, verse 15, she called to the Lord who spoke to her. The what verse was that? That was verse um, 13. Okay, 13, yes, 8. Because angels, don't Read forget, the angels so are messengers again. of God. Say it again, 13. She called to the Lord, she, she spoke called to, to the Lord. Who Can spoke? an angel be called Lord? An angel is a messenger of God. But can you call an angel Lord? No. Because in here, if he passes wait, in the Hebrew, what is the name used for Lord? As I said, we what don't want to get into used? the realm of what the is third commandment. Oh, the third <laughs> commandment. So she called the angel the divine no, name. She didn't. So read it. If someone gives you a message, who's the message from? The messenger or the angel? Read it again. She called to the Lord who spoke she to her. She called to the Lord who spoke to her. But you said, messenger. It was, you said it was an angel. The Lord spoke to her through a messenger. Okay, read the next verse. Have I not gone on seeing after he saw me? Continue. Therefore she called to the, the, the well, Be'alach Aroi, which is between Kaddish and Be'alach. So read 13 and 14. 13? She called to the Lord who spoke to her, as I said, so she called a messenger. She called to Hashem. Who spoke to her? Who spoke messenger. to her? Through a messenger. Through a... So does it say here, in through the messenger? Or are you just adding that into the text? I tried to say your... Okay, don't add to the text. Let's just read what it says in the text. She spoke to the Lord, she spoke to her. You are... You are... The Almighty, the one of his names. What? I don't want to break the third command. You see? So you can say Hashem, that's fine. So read it again, because it's the first time you didn't read that part. Are we seeing? No. You didn't read that part. She called to the Lord, Read it again. Because what you didn't read that out the first time. She called to the Lord who spoke to her, saying, You are, you are Hashem. You are Hashem. You didn't read that out the first time. You skipped and went to verse 14. So why would you skip that verse? Because that is the incriminating verse. No, it's not. Why? Because you may have noticed that before that, I was saying, this verse says, an angel spoke to her. Yes. Then I went to another verse, an angel spoke to her. Yes. Another verse, and it... So, so why did you skip that bit where she said, you, she called the angel the divine name Hashem? Because I was quoting the specific words and phrases which were relevant to the conversation. That is very me. relevant. But I was saying, what she said, you, what I was saying is that she spoke to an angel. But she so said she like, saw... So God, she perceived God. She perceived God. God sent her a message to the angel. Ah. So can you call an angel Hashem? She didn't. 
she just did. The she angel, just did. She, she didn't because the message she got from the angel wasn't the angel's message. The angel was passing a message on from the well, Almighty. She, she called the angel speaks to her. That okay, is the Almighty. Let's read message. it one more time. Because I'm just for clarification and break it down. She called to the Lord who she spoke called to, her. to the she Lord. She called to the Lord. Who spoke to her. Yes. But the Lord didn't speak to her. She sent her a message. So the angel spoke to her. That's God's message. But the angel spoke to her. So let's say I hand you a letter. Is, 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 am I the one speaking in that letter? Or is the one if you hand the letter? a letter, then. But if you speak, then you're the one who's speaking. speaking. Handing the letter is different from speaking. Because he says. She spoke if to the I one say, who spoke to her. If I say to you, can you tell this guy X, Y, Z? Can you not say that I said X, Y, Z? That's not to me. He's, he's the one who's speaking he to me. He passed the words, but I have spoken yeah. through him. But I passed on the message. Yeah, but he's so the one God speaking. Passes, God passes on the message. God has spoken to the angel. Okay, now when we go on, that's why the going on refutes what he says. Continue. Really. Yes. Which verse do you want to read? Yeah, you just said the bit where you started from 13. So we're just yeah. continuing from where you start. So it continues. Verse 14, you want? Have I not gone uh, gone on seeing after, after you saw me? No, yeah, you keep skipping the, the, the bit okay. before. I said, where do you want me to read from? You said, yeah, I just to continue from where you stopped. And she called the Lord who spoke to her. And she called the Lord. To the Lord. And she called the Lord who spoke to her. Yeah. Why doesn't it say, and she called, she called the angel who spoke to her? Because the angel is just a messenger. But you said the messenger was basically God. No, the angel is a messenger of God. But he stands in the place of God because he speaks as if he is God. As I said earlier, if a king sends an ambassador, yes. the, ambassador is, is, the ambassador is the messenger of the king. Yes. Is the ambassador a king himself? Thank you very much. Does so now, a, if an ambassador, an ambassador says to me, and the ambassador speaks as if the king, and I say to the ambassador, go screw yourself, you have to take that message back to the king. So I can say that to you as you are the representative of the king, standing in the king's place. So what she says actually goes against what you've said. No. Yes. Because when you, the reason why do you show an ambassador respect? He represents his government. But he's not the government himself. But now you're saying... His message is a message from his but you're king or whoever sent him. Now it's either the messenger speaks as a representative or if he speaks as the king, he can be dressed as the king. You can't have it in both ways. You're now trying to pick... an ambassador, when you speak to an ambassador, you don't call him your majesty. If, if the ambassador speaks as if he is with the authority of the king, then you can address the amb ambassador as the king. If he is an, if he is an ambassador passing on a message, then you will use him as an intermediary to pass on the message back to the but king. You don't but what you're trying to do is combine the no. two. An ambassador, on one hand, his message is the king's message, but you don't call him your majesty, do you? But, she, but Haga just called that representative Hashem. So that goes no. against you. You've just refuted she didn't call yourself. The angel Hashem. Yes. She said the angel Hashem spoke to her. Yes. The angel, the angel was the emissary from Hashem, okay, let's and the message was ultimately uh, from Hashem. Okay, let's read it one I've more read time. It several times. Last time, thirteen and fourteen. Because we just want everyone un to he understand says, our point and then when we read it again, they will take in our point and then use that in context with the verse. Because it says in 13, 14. Yeah. No, that's not the right question. 16, 13. Yes. She called the Lord who spoke to she her. She called the Lord who spoke to her. Yeah. But you said you cannot address the intermediary. It doesn't say she said they it to the angel. So who's she telling it to? So she spoke, she called the Lord. What, just called out loud? An angel speaks to her, now she speaks to the Lord. What, just in, in the, now she's calling out? Do you not pray to the Almighty? Okay, continue. She called the Lord who spoke to her, you are. Who spoke to her? Okay, you are. Through a messenger. <laughs> but you said you cannot address the messenger as God. Then no, the messenger isn't God, but his words are God's words. But you said you cannot address an intermediary as the person himself. He isn't God, but his words are God's words. Continue. But before your explanation was, and we'll try and 
put this back in the video. I knew you weren't going to round up. No, 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 no we're finishing on this, but we're going to pull it back now, your exact yeah. words where you said, and I'm who's, who's the representative who, of the king? He's not the king. Who, who, who did you? So she spoke to the angel and said, you no, are Hashem. No, she didn't Hashem. say that to the angel. She spoke to the Lord. She spoke to her so, through the angel. The Lord speaks to her through an angel and she now speaks direct to the Lord. But you said, when you have an intermediary, you cannot address that person. She didn't. So you're she didn't say this to the angel. She she was received. She received the message from God through the angel, okay. and she now responds direct to God. And then she says, "Have you I not gone on seeing after he saw me? Yeah, after he saw God sees everything. By the way. Ah, God sees everything. So well, we can conclude on this, and we thank you very much for this." Nice civil you. conversation um, but clearly I don't know if you want to do your own wrap up but clearly what we were trying to establish is even when I went into the Jewish scriptures itself we went into the Kabbalah which talks about the three modes of God the three heads of God the threeness why did they pick out a number three if this is the eschatological understanding of the Old Testament you don't just pick a number three out from the Old Testament for no reason. And they also talk about, we saw when it says, let us make man in our image. And he tried to say it was the uh, plural of majesty. But we clearly, I clearly went into the Midrash Rabbah, which goes to, quotes a third century rabbi and a fourth century rabbi. The third century rabbi tried to say it was a plural of majesty and his disciple said why do you give the heretics a makeshift answer when will you give us a proper answer and even the answer he gave wasn't a clear answer so it is something that has confounded the jewish um, scholars and rabbis for hundreds of years and they cannot give a proper interpretation of that verse that's why even when we went to the next interpretation they say moses asked god why do you give the heretics a reason to then make a claim on the bible so therefore they understood that this verse is problematic and there is no su sufficient explanation from a Jewish perspective of what it means because we go into the, the, um, the Midrash and it goes against them. So whatever they say, we know we have the evidence that goes against them. Then it, obviously this was linked to Christ being the word of the Lord. We went to Jeremiah, the, uh, the word of the Lord put out his hand and touched his mouth. How would this be possible? Because they said it was someone hearing but then clearly when we see the hand part they started you know jumping left right doing gymnastics so clearly we see if the Jews have the proper interpretation why are they getting so confused about interpreting the verses and we even started with Josh saying that you can apparently have two contradictory truths that that is in the spiritual realm because what we clearly see in our last conversation he said that oral law can be confusing and the rabbis contradict each other. The reason why they contradict each other is because they're trying to make excuses and reasoning for this and it has nothing to do with the eschatological nature of God. So how can this be the oral law that was passed down to Moses where it doesn't make sense? So clearly when we read the verses they are self-explanatory but the oral Torah takes out the, the understanding of the Bible and that's why we also went to Isaiah precept of one precept which gives you the way to understand the Bible is that you read line upon line and build up your case and your argument and your understanding so maybe we'll continue these conversations with uh, Josh if he's here next week he's going again soon but clearly the audience can decipher and work out for themselves they've not given a satisfactory explanation of why there is this plurality or threeness we talked about a had as well we see he had two explanations of two different verses whereas actually the Christian interpretation was consistent we played applied the same logic for both verses that I had actually means something that can be conjoined from more than one so until next time